Hi, welcome to Fill the Boot. I'm Lance and today I want to talk about virality. This is the holy grail of business models. And we hear people talk about virality all the time, often in context of some meme or cat picture going viral on the internet. But business virality is a very different thing and comes in a couple of different flavors. So I'm gonna talk about what those are and how you can leverage them to make your business go into hyper growth. Virality is any situation where users are bringing other users into the ecosystem. And if they're bringing many users, then things take off really quickly. Anytime you have users bringing multiple other users, you get an exponential growth. And it can explode until you've, in fact, at least in theory, taken over the entire population of the Earth, which is, until we discover other populated planets, sort of a limiting factor to how far you can take your viral growth. This is all an analogy to epidemiology. If you look at how a virus spreads through a population, if each sick individual infects at least one other individual, then you get an epidemic and the number of sick people explodes and sweeps through the population. I break down virality in business into three separate groups, incentivize virality, advocacy virality, and inherent virality. And each one behaves differently and can be leveraged differently in your business. Incentivized virality is the one over which you have the most control. That's where you're effectively bribing users to bring their friends into your app ecosystem. You're giving them a discount or some additional features that you unlock in exchange for recruiting their friends to join the platform. And you might even give their friends some incentive to say, if a friend recommends you, you get an extra month or whatever it may be. But basically you're saying, we're going to pay you in some way to act as an agent for us to go recruit your friends to join this platform. And that can be very effective, particularly early on, but it doesn't scale terribly well. If you're trying to get to a billion users and you're paying all of them this large incentive, the attractiveness of that incentive tends to decay over time and the cost that you're paying to bring in those new users goes up. But it's very effective in the early stages. Advocacy virality is where your users can't wait to tell their friends about your product or solution. They are brand ambassadors. They're going out and telling the world about this amazing thing they've discovered and effectively recruiting all the people they tell to at least go check you out. They're providing free advertising and word of mouth. I think of my own relationship with Tesla. I've never been a car person, but I talk a lot about my Tesla. I'm a fanboy for Tesla. I have convinced a couple of other people to go buy Teslas. I really wish they were doing some incentive. I, I'd love to be getting some uh, commission on all of those deals. But they've created a solution that makes their customers so passionate, they go out and tell everyone about it. And then at some point, you reach a flashpoint where there are so many people using a product, it's everywhere. It's almost like in the air we breathe and everyone in society suddenly feels like they're left out if they're not using this thing. We saw that really clearly with the iPod where there had been many different MP3 players and music players in the past. But when the iPod caught on, suddenly it went from something that a reasonable number of people had to something that it seemed absolutely everyone had. If you were on public transportation on a metro or a bus, you'd see most of the other people on the bus with those little white earbuds. And in fact, Apple was very smart. They made sure it was easy to see that everyone was using the iPods because they were visibly different and easy to spot in the wild. The thing about advocacy virality is that it's both really easy and terribly hard. It's really easy because all you have to do is create a product or service that's so amazingly wonderful, everyone wants to talk about it. And it's hard because you need to create a product or service that's so amazingly wonderful, everyone wants to talk about it. The third, and to my mind, most powerful type of virality is what I call inherent virality. This is a situation where the value of the thing you're providing goes up the more other people are using it. 
It's a network effect. So if I've got three friends using it, that's great. If I've got 30 friends using it, that's fantastic. I get much more benefit from it than if I had fewer users. So because I'm already a user, I really want other people to go use this product. The canonical example of this is fax machines. If I have a fax machine and no one else I know has a fax machine, then it's just a chunk of electronics sitting on my desk doing nothing. It only has value in so much as I can send faxes or receive faxes from other people. The same thing applied back in the early days of the phone. There's no point in owning a phone if you can't call anyone. But the larger percentage of your friends that have phones, the more useful this becomes until it's the default way you reach out to literally everyone. Now, there's a catch-22 with this, which makes it difficult to launch inherently viral products because when you first start out, it isn't very useful because your first adopters don't have any friends who are in that network. Now, the solution to that typically is to start with a very focused community, some small group of people that you can quickly penetrate to a level where you hit that network effect and it's useful to them. Facebook famously did this by limiting it to just active college students at first, and they'd go into individual universities to promote it into that community. So you had a closed group of people with physical connection to each other, obvious reasons to have relationships to each other, and you could rapidly saturate a group like that to the point where the network effects started to take over and people would be going out and recruiting their friends to join to get the benefit of this social network, to be able to communicate and chat with all their friends in this environment. And it wasn't until they'd hit a large enough population through universities that they took that restriction off and allowed it to then filter out into the broader population as students graduated university and their families wanted to get involved and people were hearing about this through word of mouth. And then it was able to go viral in the broader world. But to start with, to get over that hump, to make sure that they could get enough density of users to be useful to people, they focus tightly on initial seed audiences just to get going. So when you wanna analyze the virality of your business, you need to do a little bit of math. Fundamentally, there's a couple of inputs to pay attention to. And the first is the number of effective invites that each of your users sends out, either because they are advocating how many people do they tell about your product, or because they're sending on active invitations to invite that other person to directly join your network. So it comes with some activation code or a link that allows you to tie that back and perhaps they get some special gift or incentive for doing so. When you multiply the number that each user sends out by the conversion rate, the fraction of those contacts that actually turn into active users of your service, you get the virality coefficient which at the end of the day is just how many people do each one of your existing users turn into new users? How many new people do they recruit into your system? And it's not quite as simple as that because a lot of complexities come up with time. Over what time do you measure this? Do you only look at how many people this user brought in in the first week or the first six months? Now, there are certainly gonna be situations where after two, three years of using a service, some of your users will still occasionally be reaching out, inviting, contacting, recruiting new people into the ecosystem. But generally, you're gonna look at some moderate time frame. Let's say the first three months. Within the first three months, how many people do they bring on board? And then on average, how many do they bring on board? And there are three different realms that this virality coefficient, which usually is written K, can fall into. The virality coefficient can be less than one, in which case it will die out. Right? This is a disease that's not going to sweep through a population, but it does act as a multiplier. So even if you don't have a high virality coefficient, it can still be valuable. So if it costs you uh, $10 to attract that first person, but they then on average attract 0.9 other people, then you're almost getting two for one, and it effectively halves your acquisition cost for new users. Right around one is that tipping point. Anything above one is actually exponential growth. But if it's very, very close, you just end up with sort of a continuous trend. Each person's effectively bringing in one more person, and you get a linear growth model there. But 
if you get above one, even a little bit, it starts to explode. So each person's then bringing on more than one, and each one of those more than one people brings on more than one. And so the numbers explode. If it's 1.1, it explodes somewhat slowly, but if you're getting twice as many people every three months, it really goes bananas. It gets extremely large, extremely fast, and quickly becomes implausible. In fact, that's something I look for when I see business plans and people talk about having a viral business and then they project out some virality coefficient of four, right? Every one of the people that I bring in is gonna bring in four other people and then they show that hockey sticking for the next year. But I know in my head that that hockey sticks to larger than the population of the planet pretty quickly. And why is that really gonna happen? And we know in fact that it's gonna be lower. Even if it's a situation where you'd want to bring in all of your friends, most of the people who come in probably won't actually become long-term active users of your service. So they won't be bringing in anyone else. And you need to average those people out against those people who do really buy into what you're doing and invite all their friends. And in aggregate, you still need to be getting above that threshold. Really everything with virality certainly advocacy and inherent comes down to the quality of the user experience. And frankly, even incentivized, no one wants to invite their friend to a bad experience. It reflects poorly on them. Anytime you are suggesting someone else join something or go look at something or pay for some service, you are inherently putting some of your reputation at risk in doing so. And you want to believe that they're going to have a good experience. So really in all kinds of virality, the user experience is core. People want to feel good about using it, feel good about recommending it, and feel that their friends will appreciate having had it recommended to them. So if you want to pursue a viral strategy, user experience is key. And of course, it's always pretty key, right? If you don't have a good user experience, you probably don't have a lot of users. But particularly if this is the growth strategy you're pursuing, making sure that it's a lickable user interface and it's easy, it's fun, it's you know seamless to onboard into the system makes all the difference. I was recently advising a company that had a perfect viral model. It was inherently viral. Uh, they had a solution that went around sports and you'd want to invite your friends to interact around these sporting events with you. And because it's more fun to have more friends, everyone involved is going to want to invite their friends. And I was very excited because it's often the case that people are shoehorning virality into their business model, but it doesn't really come out naturally. It's not something that is built into the way the app works, but things like Facebook and this social sports app have that. Your friends will want to invite their friends because it's more fun after they do. His problem was the onboarding experience, the user experience of the app, and the pain point that he was filling. So even though he had the perfect business model, it still didn't take off because when people visited, they didn't see the need for it and didn't stick around. And they had enough trouble getting onto the platform that they were dissuaded from going any farther, which, I was very upset about it. I thought this was a really cool idea, but it shows that just because you have the model for virality doesn't mean you're going to get virality unless you cover all the other bases as well. So I get a lot of pitches from companies that talk about having a viral business model. And I love to hear that, but I then wanna hear that you've thought this through quite a bit. I want to know that you've looked at what kind of virality you're having, why that's gonna work. You've done some experiments, you've got some preliminary data showing how fast your company will grow, what that virality coefficient is. You have real data on what fraction of your users will invite people, how many invites they'll send, and maybe even some preliminary data about what that conversion rate might look like. Even if you're sort of faking it up, where you're doing surveys of people, you're giving them mock-ups and saying, would you tell people People about this. That's not ironclad data, but any data is better than no data. Everything you can do to convince yourself that you're not just deluding yourself about the viral potential for your product or service, but actually it will work. And then looking to optimize that. How can you improve that conversion rate? How can you make it easier to onboard? How can you make it easier to share? How can you improve that experience? Because every time you make it a little better, you can improve that virality coefficient just a little bit. 
and even small changes in the virality coefficient, particularly above one, make gigantic differences over fairly short time scales. So if you've got a viral business, I'd love to hear about it. I wanna know how you did it, what worked, what didn't, what kind of measurements you found, and what kind of viral coefficients you discovered for your business. Please let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching this episode of Feel the Boot. I hope you found it useful and interesting, and if so, please like and subscribe, and then click the bell icon to be notified each time new content becomes available. I upload episodes every other week, and I'd love to hear from you what other topics you want me to cover. Let me know down in the comments. And I'm trying to help as many people as possible. This isn't a business for me. This is a passion project because when I'm trying to advise people, I realize I don't scale well and YouTube allows me to reach a much larger audience. So if you know anyone who could benefit from this, please share it with them. Till next time, ciao.